Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 3 Three Phenomenal Gunas Goddess Sri said, Now, Chakra, listen whilst I describe the impure course of creation. I am Narayani, possessed of eternal, flawless, infinite and beneficial attributes, verily Vishnu's supreme being. I am regarded as exempt from limitations of space, time, or form. Sangvid, consciousness alone, is the essence of my being, literally form. Whereas Aishwarya and the other divine qualities are my attributes. This distinction is effected by my will alone, without aid or directive, and this polarized state is said to consist of jnana, aishwarya, and shakti. Now I will describe my limited manifestation comprising vijnana, aishwarya, and shakti. In accordance with my sovereign will, incapable of being subordinated. When I, the inscrutable, become manifest and active, my form voluntarily undergoes a mutation within the essential triad of Vijnana, Aishwarya, and Shakti. Just as the transparent juice of the sugarcane, when concentrated, assumes the form of molasses, so does transparent Vijnana evolve into sattva, goodness, the primordial guna. Similarly, my aishwarya develops into rajas, passion, and my shakti develops into tamas, ignorance. Chakra, these three primordial or phenomenal attributes are called the complex of the three gunas. During the creation, this trigunya changes into a state where rajas predominates. During sustenance of creation, it is dominated by sattva, and at the time of destruction, by tamas. Though I am essentially consciousness, primordial and all-pervasive, O Purandara, I adopt as my basis and focus my creative urge upon the phenomenal gunas, to undertake creation, maintenance, and destruction of the universe. Although I am attributeless, I alone voluntarily preside over these gunas and turn the wheel of creation, maintenance, and destruction. Chakra Why dost thou manifest thyself in these two distinct courses of pure and impure creation, involving the three pairs of attributes, jnana, aishwarya, virya, shakti, bala, and tejas. I salute thee, lotus-born goddess. As I ask this question, please answer me. Shri, my divine power is sovereign, so my will is the sole instigation of creation. This point even the wise fail to grasp. Yet learn from me as I explain this truth. I am ever evolving both as Lord and subordinate. Narayan is the Supreme Lord of all, and I am his Lordhood. O Purandara, that which is subordinate is known as a combination of consciousness and unconsciousness. Absolute consciousness determines the state of the enjoyer. The non-sentient state covers upakarana, the things enjoyed. That conscious element, chit-chakti, influenced by beginningless avidya, nescience, which is introduced by me, becomes the enjoyer, and on account of its own egohood, identifies itself with non-sentient objects in terms of the relationship of I and mine. 
when, through the influence of knowledge, that avidya is eliminated, consciousness, having dropped its ego concept, recaptures my essential nature. That absolute knowledge, present in the pure course of creation, is introduced by me as the supreme vyuha, when, out of compassion, I reveal knowledge to the adept. The relationship between the two courses is that of protector and protected. The pure course of creation protects, whereas the impure is protected. This concludes my explanation. What else do you want to hear? Chakra Why dost thou function in two states, as lord and as subordinate? Deign to tell me how many varieties of subordinates there are, and describe their traits. Shri The distinction between Isha and Ishitavya cannot be related to my or Narayan's essential nature. The Eternal God and myself do not really possess the aspects of Isha and Ishitavya. Subordinates are of two types, distinguished as sentient and insentient. Consciousness is here the enjoyer and assumes the forms of conscious beings. Insentience becomes objects of enjoyment and is of three types. The learned call that non-conscious aspect my third state of expansion. I voluntarily divide myself into these two shaktis, sentient and insentient, to represent my two everlasting aspects. The conscious shakti is flawless and pure, consisting of consciousness and bliss. Influenced by beginningless nescience, it travels unendingly through the bondage of many lives and deaths. Although the non-conscious Shakti is insentient, impure, evolving, and the embodiment of the three phenomenal gunas, yet I voluntarily manifest myself as such. Just as a blazing fire produces smoke of its own accord, so I, though pure consciousness in essence, assume insentience as a mode of existence. Although beyond being affected by misconception or even distortion through word, I voluntarily manifest myself in the non-conscious state. Although indivisible, through various upadis, limiting factors, consciousness is divided into the external, insentient, and the internal, conscious creation. Such limitations are imposed by my own divine sovereign will, and I am subordinate to none. Recognizing my sovereignty, you will become enlightened. Chakra How is it that thou createst worlds in which both pleasure and pain exist? Would it not be better to abstain from creation altogether, or to allow only happiness to exist? Shri I create a mixed creation consisting of both pleasure and pain, because I take into account the cumulative results of both good and evil acts committed by the living who are under the influence of beginningless nescience. Chakra. O goddess born from the milky ocean, if thou art obliged to create both pleasure and pain on account of karma, where then is thy freedom of will? Shri. This karma is regarded as my instrument in fulfilling my creative function. My use of an instrument as a creator does not impair my freedom of will. Pure and independent as I am, I am subordinate to none. I divide myself variously as the performer of a deed, the object of performance, 
and the deed itself. You should not search for a reason for my doing this. My leela, playfulness, is the only reason. Therefore, be calm.